Hello all and uh, welcome to episode 15 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. Uh, today we have with us uh, Kumaran who is the Chief Technology Officer, Chief Mentor of Tiny Magic and he runs a wonderful uh, session on, on every alternate Saturdays and I participate. It's called Saturday Architecture and he focuses on uh, uh, improving happiness of people using and using architecture right and uh, uh, we we really really uh, value his his uh, inputs on uh, what he thinks about technology and and how humans interact with technology and how organizations uh, work with technology so welcome kumaran hi deepak good to be here so uh, most of you know that uh, our podcast is available uh, as an audio podcast as well as a video podcast. You can uh, subscribe to any of our uh, uh, versions uh, using YouTube. We are on YouTube. You can go to etiunplugged.in, which shows you all the ways to subscribe. Right? And we, we really value if you subscribe. Uh, it really helps us understand uh, what you want to hear from us. So coming to the topic of today, we what we want to talk about today is how how this this change which is happening across the world of working from home how is it impacting people how do we really uh, make better use of this opportunity or is there is it is it is there a negative impact of working from home how does this really change the working world in general kumar what do you want to say um i think it's it's very different um it's i would say it's hugely different actually working from home um and so i'll, I'll give an example so there was this uh, friend of mine who does process consulting uh, uh-huh. and uh, this was for customers who were uh, in vietnam and he's based out of india so he keeps traveling there uh-huh. and uh, because of this obviously he couldn't travel and the program manager there uh, scheduled so there was a two day workshop right and it was from morning 9 to 6 kind of a thing so he said let's shift it uh, so the uh, program manager there she shifted it uh, and marked two full days okay mm-hmm. and sent the teams meeting mm-hmm. so he kind of uh, called her and said uh, we can't do it she said, why? She says, uh, no, uh, it's like eight hours on a video conference call, uh, two days together. Uh, people won't uh, participate. He says, no, they have committed to participating already. What is the problem? Mm-hmm. Right? You can actually do it. Then it took him a lot of convincing to make sure that they split it into some eight three-hour sessions. Now, the program manager obviously got worried that something which was supposed to finish in two days now is actually taking close to two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks, right? Because you don't get three hours. See, it's like locking people for two days is a lot easier than getting three hours for eight days, right? right? Or even five days, 16 hours, like six days, like let's say, okay. So six days of three hours is much harder to get rather than two full days. Okay. Mm. So the thought of having talked to some 10 people and getting their time and buy in such that they agree to the same time slot across six days is a huge problem. Right. And they want to get it done the easy way by telling, you know, let's just continue with the previous two days. We have got it. We will go ahead with that. Okay. Now, um, one is, of course, getting their time. But why did my friend push for this change itself? Now, what happens is like when you are uh, doing a conversation uh, in real time and sitting with people, you're looking at different people, right? And you're listening to them in all sorts of different things. You have a range of movement, correct? Now, let's say both of us were there, right? Let's just take this here, right? If both of us were there, I can lean back, right? I can move my chair around. I can get up and go and come and things like that. I can, uh, even if I don't walk up, right? And there are two, three people sitting, right? And when I'm switching from one person to another, it's very refreshing. 
okay right here i am kind of straight jacketed onto the screen mm. even if 10 people are looking i am looking at the same direction even my eyes is not moving yes yes and something called fatigue hits us fatigue is when you do a repeated action again and again you get hit by fatigue right it's different from being tired right so there's a cognitive fatigue and there's a physical fatigue i cannot look at yeah, sir right in and mechanical even, engineering in mechanical engineering uh, we fatigue actually is a different phenomena for for uh, materials right so materials repeatedly applied the same stretch they they tend to get fatigued which is different from constant pressure and breaking under pressure fatigue has a different uh, way yes. of uh, breaking down as compared to uh, a single pressure event perfect and the beauty of fatigue is right once or twice doesn't you can't see anything repeatedly done right at it's like then it becomes and suddenly it will break the entire system exactly and, and exactly. you wouldn't even know that fatigue caused it to break so detecting fatigue is a very tough thing to do and this is something that's getting missed here fatigue of looking in the same position same direction and you're using your ears too much right you don't right. know how to convey and to make it matters complicated 30 to 40% of the people switch on their switch off their videos and also it's something like when you're listening the audio comes is not that perfect we don't realize it the yes. ears and the auditory senses are actually doing extra work so if both yes. of us were in person if we measure the uh, power consumption of the auditory system it yes. will be at least 50% lower right. rather than when it and even when i'm talking now right i'm putting yeah. extra effort to energy to talk to make sure that you hear it it yeah. reaches into the mic and and i have this big huge mic and we have struggled so much with normal right. people don't have that right so all these things right so every now if you break it down every sentence that i make i'm putting a 50% more effort just right. to make the and statement forget yeah. them agreeing and things like that Uh, and that adds to the fatigue here yeah. that adds to the fatigue now this is something which remote working are underestimating first problem mm. right uh, when you do a remote meeting or a remote interaction the fatigue is more so that needs to be uh, taken care of the second one is uh, to myself itself now this is when i was what i was telling is with the teams itself and plain interaction i'm not talking about and even collaboration right you have things like hand off of work taking it verification i'm not getting there this is just pure sharing of idea and thought just right. that one aspect okay the second one which i would pick up is at a personal level there have been experiments that is done that for rats right uh, they will give them a sugar solution the rats mm. will just eat it and keep on eating it and don't know when to stop and they will actually die eating mm-hmm. same thing for aquarium owners right if you put too much food into the fish tank the fish will just keep eating it and it will die you can actually mm-hmm. kill them by overfeeding they just mm-hmm. don't know when to stop mm-hmm. when we work remotely i see lot of people getting into the same problem they don't know when to start working and when to stop now when there was a physical office there was a time that you will get up in office you will have bath then you will leave office then you go and then probably for the high flying or the very busy people as soon as you get into your cab you can get into a call your work starts then right, right. or for somebody else it will be like when they do a swipe in the work starts for somebody when they switch on and log in the work starts okay at 11 10 30 11 when i lock my system my work stops and it's coffee or water cooler time mm-hmm. then i come back again and i do it i get a 10 15 minute break right i talk to others similarly for lunch and at 6 o'clock when i swipe out it is done so there are clear triggers on when to start work and when to stop work right when you're right. at your home all these triggers are gone yes now we yes. become like that rat or that fish which is just eating and eating and we are thinking that we will stop when the work is done right 
right no work ever gets done it just changes from one to another we'll never there's, there's never a stage that you know my sleep will be kimed and especially if you're more responsible right more responsibilities you have that list will continuously be there and that ability to take those breaks right refresh yourself is not there i'll give a personal example i've been working from home i think from the time i joined microsoft the nature of our job i think both of us right. will be familiar with that right Right. and it's not that we follow a 9 to 5 pattern like my yes. personal pattern is like i start work at let's say 9:30 i go till 11:30 and then 11:30 to do i don't work i watch tv i watch a couple of episodes maybe a movie i have a lunch i take a snort short nap and i mm-hmm. go get up at around 2 to 30 and then i go till 5:30 again right and then if there are calls of course i have to take calls but if it's left to myself then i probably work to 2:30 to 5:30 or 6:30 then take another one hour break my kids are there spend some time with them and again start at around 7:30 and then go till 8:30 so i kind of yeah. spray that spread it across yeah spread it across right and sometimes i will like week weekends also i will try to squeeze in some 3 4 hours so that i kind of let's call it it's called resource leveling in lean right you kind of level it out over the week now if you are working from home seven days is available to you you don't have to stick right. to that five days now those are the ways in which you can keep yourself energized and enthusiastic you cannot follow the pattern that you followed during work right i think these let's just i mean it's a huge ocean i'm just taking one at a collaboration interaction level and at a team level i'm also right. kind of curious what's your habit what's your pattern so so my see my pattern actually is very similar to to uh, your in fact i in fact i don't what i've deliberately done is i have not stuck to a pattern right so i uh, just to keep it interesting i i sometimes i uh, depends on sometimes my calls start at 6 o'clock in the morning right and uh, sometimes i take the call while i am walking my dog right so so i have sort of mixed it with my a uh, regular work where i know my job when i know when i have contribution just for listening just i'm just participating in a call and i'm not expected to contribute too much i will mix it up with some other work which i'm doing and i'll take it on the on on the go and do whatever else i'm doing and and i will not really so it's not my focus time i'm just listening in absorbing stuff right so that is my pattern and and i i will also do intermittently if i don't have a call i will after lunch i will have a nap and then i will do a work in the evening depending on what calls i have and all but the interesting thing which 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 is means I, of course i have also been doing the same thing but what i don't do is usually is i usually do not sit in one place right i don't i don't do work uh uh continuously i don't work continuously even if i am uh because i have a workstation right so i will when i when i'm there i'm working there right so i'm but what i make a point is i'm not on the same place uh looking at the same thing for more than 30 to 45 minutes because maybe that is my attention deficit right right i i will i cannot i usually do not spend so much time uh looking at the screen even if i am working on the screen i have i right outside my window there is a tree i i can look outside right so so i, I have you i do not have a book called deep work De- uh, uh, not heard of that book yeah okay so, so tell, tell me more about it tell me more so okay it. so let's just uh, let's say that's be the recommendation for this week also right uh, okay okay so deep work is a interesting book i've just had a summary of it i haven't read it fully Mm-hmm. but it talks about essentially what you were telling right mm-hmm. and it kind of the studies have shown that 30 minutes is a maximum attention span that we can get into mm-hmm. so you design yourself such that you do 30 minutes of deep work so there's also something similar called pomodoro you might have heard of that right pomodoro technique for learning so it's like mm-hmm. 15 minutes you learn and then you take a break and you switch to some other subject like that so basically uh what you kind of do is take a 30 minute shot and go deep into it and then take a break you can't sustain things for a very long time and usually i think uh when you are working in real life right it's like par programming 30 year 30 minutes you are at peak 
the person next to you carries you for the next 30 and then that peak goes down and then you carry so this keeps happening but when you're on your own you cannot keep that momentum and in, in fact in fact in in fact in fact that is a that's a that's a very good uh, suggestion actually to work in pairs right so in fact uh, i and one of my colleagues were doing a session uh, yesterday and and it worked very well we were there for the duration of nearly 6 hours on on a session right but but we were uh, it was an interactive session so everybody was not like we were talking and everybody is doing nothing so it was interactive session people had activities to do and 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 kept on doing it and we said share screen everybody got an opportunity to share screen see show what they are doing etc etc and we were bouncing off each other right so that actually kept the momentum going on for so long and other people were also interested because it's not just one person showing stuff and uh, and 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 doing one way so that i think that there is something to that uh that working in pairs that makes it uh, uh, makes it work la- make it more productive also in some cases and i think th- there is and when you're in a physical office that happens naturally in a remote working mechanism there are too many blockers to make that happen right and something has to be done about that like one of the uh, groups which i'm mentoring they were telling there's a practical problem that the teams are not able to connect with each other right. and uh, as what's the problem they said they have teams and i said fine get everybody into that channel and then click meet now and all of them he says no no the problem is i have around 10 team members they are all working of poor data connections mm. so then they came with a intermediate thing like you know what within the team i have the db team i have the operations team i have the level 1 team like that i will make them into separate small channels mm-hmm. right so i will do take three of them into a meeting then the bandwidth will work mm-hmm. so in a real life you could have a 10 10 member half an hour meeting right getting mm-hmm. all of them and probably 10 people mean they are in a cubicle they don't even have to have a meeting room so the team lead stands up 10 people are there and then they have this conversation and then it's done a literal stand up meeting but in the when they had to do the same thing they were losing connect so essentially they had to restructure it telling that you know we will have just the team leads of all the sub teams three of them plus me four we will have one meeting then the during the day we'll have another 15 15 15 15 three more 15 minute meetings with the others in groups of four each this is a completely different song and dance right right so 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 actually means coming to uh, how other people are also sort of seeing this thing means i i hope you have seen this statement from satya nadella right says he is no fan of uh, permanent work from home right and he says he misses the physical meetings right so this is so this is ceo of microsoft who actually It is the person who who would be very happy if if everybody just sticks on teams and stays there forever. But he's saying that uh, permanent work from home is not a viable sort of a, a solution, right? We have to go and physically meet and and like we were discussing in the other call, that whole physical dynamic, right? Being in the same room <clears throat> with 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 somebody else, how does that how does that change the dynamics of a of a discussion? so what what is your what is your uh, uh, experience on since you've been doing these remote sessions how, how is that change from what you when you were doing these live sessions ha ah, so it's pretty stressful it there's no uh, so especially like for example if you are delivering a session right and i have uh, let's just take i have 10 people okay mm-hmm. now as i'm talking my eyes can actually subconsciously collect signals from everybody right okay so i know whether the senses is going well or not right but the moment i shifted to this online right i have lost 70 to 80% of the signals i don't know what's happening and right. that produces a lot of stress in me are people listening so if i have to check right if i need to get a sense of whether i'm what i'm talking makes sense right 20 people are there i'll just do that right it takes me one second to do a sweep of 20 people right, right. now subconsciously i have collected signals out of 20 how many is 
good and with more experience i can actually get a fair good idea that they are engaged not engaged 50 is engaged 50% is not all this happens in a fraction of a second right. now when i'm doing this remotely right mm -hmm. one there are some technical limitations right yeah. uh, for example i guess um uh in teams it shows blocks of four or four or five i think you it, i don't know whether you can increase it i haven't seen that you can go to up to nine i guess in the newer versions you can go up to nine so configurable okay so zoom yeah. shows around 20 10 15 right. but then you still have to scroll beyond a particular yeah. thing okay right. now right. in the middle of a talk i can't keep scrolling to see what their faces are <laughs> yes yes okay and also the problem is the window size is so small that i can't get it right okay unless you have a come to the real uh, physical size people it is very difficult to do it's physical have big screen right? yeah. i i think the closest thing that we have is when we have those big virtual headsets <laughs> and those virtual rooms that's getting created right okay yes, we are yes. still quite many years away from that happening in reality okay right right so that there's no replacement for that that's one mm -hmm. and, and and second i think is uh, when we have discussions with critical discussions, even if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. you actually use your body to communicate, not just your face. Right, right. right? There's a huge difference between like, um, I'm, re uh, I'm actually, uh, yeah, please go ahead and tell, right? Versus I can just, yeah, please tell, what's the next thing? The moment you see my hands, right, the energy changes. Right, right. Okay, so I think it's in that way, right? It's like we have to, well, let's put it this way. Uh, we took physical presence for granted and we didn't right. give enough value to it. Now, it's given an opportunity to treat it with value. So it's not a question of do I need physical presence or not? I think what is needed is, uh, it is needed but it's a very valuable resource. Now, don't yes. treat it like a low cost resource. Yes, yes. So until until the people get uh, used to, or maybe they, whatever they call it, herd immunity or vaccine, something comes al along, which actually uh, makes uh, makes them makes the people forget about COVID nineteen. Until then, some of uh, one of one of the things actually which has happened interestingly is. That even means, given the history of pandemics and other things, the information spread of a pandemic or the spread of the pan pandemic itself was localized. Mm. Right? Localized even means uh, uh, it took years to go out of a place. Now it takes days to get out of a place, right? Or it, it, it and the information about that spreads in seconds, right? Because uh, because of the internet and other things, right? So so. So now, in some ways, that has become universal culture, right? That this work culture, the way people have behaved across the world, this mm. has created a, some level of uniform work culture of how to how to work remotely, right? So, right. so that is. So, what do you what do you think about that? Is that is that a is that a good thing, bad thing, or doesn't really matter? I think it's. It's good. Uh, I think it will. Uh, it has to seep in through a different uh, cultures, right? So the clash is pretty much high. I think, uh, uh, for example, something as simple as switching on a video is we still struggle with that, and and it's not a small struggle. It's actually a right, huge right. struggle. Right. Right. Uh, I don't think that has really. Um, spread if I just take that specific thing and I think that's a very significant part of uh, that culture kind of spreading interesting so, I think the switching on the video thing in fact the session which I was there in yesterday it is blocked at the corporate level to switch on video which huh. is a very strange which is a very strange thing right since all of you are working from us, no, no, there's some security and we work in some secure domain, etc. So we need to be blocking video. I said, I said, I need to see your faces. I need to understand so we are able to communicate or not. Go ahead, so you're I, making a point. No, so I would say 
I will actually agree that this thing is spreading. When I see at least when I get into a conference call or a video call, I see at least 70% of them by default with the video on. Today I have 10% on. When we reach 60-70%, I think we have at least got the basics of remote working and collaboration. Till then, right. I think we have a lot of distance to go. Right. So, I, I, so I think uh, uh, the conclusion here is we are still struggling with working from home. A lot of people are still struggling with working from home. And it will, uh, so the, the maturity of working from home will depend on how the COVID scenario changes, right? How, how quickly or how slowly the response to, to medication, to lockdowns, to, to sanitation, all these changes, whatever, how it actually evolves, right? So I, so and, I, I think, uh, yeah. And, and I, I think it's also there's one aspect which is not very uh, clear, uh, which I suspect can actually change the game whether it is vaccines or thing, is that the liability of infection, mm -hmm. right? So if I get infected in office, is the organization responsible for me? According to government of India, it is. <laughs> that is, that is the, as per the rules, the, the organization could be held, held responsible for infections in, in their location. Okay. So there's, that is that is the rule actually. If, if, so if, so if that is the rule, okay. Yes. Now let's say there is one, like let's say a facility of a company which has three thousand people. One guy in that organization is tested positive. Correct. Now fifty more people get tested positive after a week. Now all the fifty can attribute it to the company. Absolutely. According, according but to maybe the in rules. reality, they never got infected in the company. They went to a bar and they got some other place. There. So that's yes. Yeah, so that's where the, our last uh, weeks, uh, last time's discussion around that Aroge Setu app is is uh, is going to become important, right? Even in our previous call, Ramesh talked about how Australia is enforcing that uh, uh, that app app. The, the the tracing uh, contact tracing app and all those things right so that that those are the things which will become the norm uh, like now you are going to get insisted to show that arogya setu app when you take a flight right so and and i believe in the next 6 months that is going to become the default boarding pass procedure is so you have to show a green mark on your uh, on your Arugya Setu app, even though you are unwilling to share privacy and other things, it says no longer you are welcome on the airport or the train or anything. So organizations may start insisting that unless you have a green mark on your on your Arugya Setu app, you are not allowed to come to the company. Right. Oh. So that that so those are the things which may different. May happen. Yeah, I was telling it's about. The liability of okay. getting of getting more people inside the company. Will organizations be willing to take it? Enterprises are very cautious about liability and compliance. They that's don't. What, that's what they. Yeah. That's why they will look at solutions like our okay, Setu. says because the thing is liability is going to come from government rules, uh, courts deciding certain things, right? So Correct. so as long as they have taken all these precautions, they says okay. We are going to go with the whatever government prescribes as the way to prevent infection. You everybody has to have a Rogue Setu app. If you show green, we are we're going to allow you. So, so that is how the organizations are going to sort of prevent that the liability uh creeping into them, them hitting them. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So so that's how means airports. How is the who tell me in the if they in in India, if the whole population has got one lakh now infected people. Who is responsible? The government is responsible. How? Who is going to hold the government responsible for the infect, spread of the infection, right? So same same sort of means, although the government can come back and say the organization is responsible, says that the country is infected, is the government responsible? So, so those are the, <laughs> so if the company is responsible, the government is responsible, right? So, so some of these things will eventually will come to courts, right? So, and, and I, I believe some of them will will get so we will soon get an answer to your question whether <laughs> yeah whether the, whether the company is liable or not but there is technology which is they are going to use there you're going to use government rules right 
most companies have already followed their so as per the laws they are going to follow the rules it says okay one third capacity all those things they are going to do but if i if you go out today uh lockdown 4.0 whatever it is now it is i don't think people are following anything <laughs> what is what is what, what is your opinion is are people following anything i think uh, number of actually i haven't gone out uh, deepak i really don't know yeah. i haven't seen with my eyes it's just what i'm okay. reading and in general public people where crowd is there i don't they are asking masks of course yeah around 70 80% of them but beyond that i don't think so no, i'm just basing my opinion on what do you see around what when the lockdown opened and the liquor shops opened right <laughs> all those things all yeah, the things yeah. around social distancing and everything went off right but well uh, yeah i think that's what i had to uh, say all right so i think uh, a good, good discussion and and there's a lot of good pointers on uh, let me just uh, give you that uh, book once again let me just give you the author and the book um, yeah let, let us let us look at that book yes so it's called uh, rules for focus success in a distracted world okay okay so that topic is the thing seems to be a little dis, uh distracting right it seems mm-hmm. to say that you are too distracted but you are actually working from home you are actually not distracted but the right. core of that is says like how to get more focus in a shorter period of time right so means dist- distraction is good actually yeah so some amount of distraction is good so correct so, so maybe are- I, i've been i've been doing this thing unknowingly i guess Because I I have I have that I I believe I have that attention deficit where I cannot really focus. I for think longer. I think even within ourselves, right? Even within Microsoft, if you look at it, uh, mm-hmm. we would have around forty to fifty percent of the folks turning up to office at nine. Yes, yes, yes. Right, yes. and forty to fifty percent of the people will turn up. Yes, uh, and uh, the rest twenty five to thirty percent is at the customer location, so they don't have a choice. <laughs> yes, they have to okay. turn up at that time. So there's actually one five ten percent only was like willingly staying at home. <laughs> yes, yes. Even in an open environment or a flexible place like Microsoft, we still had this challenge. Yes, yes. Okay, so it's to um, so this work. and ones who have worked from home have developed this thing by right. nature you just couldn't do it so you figured out a solution over a period of years it's not like like i have been doing this for what close to 15 years now mm-hmm. so i know and it's evolved it's not like on day one i got it so it's like over a 15 year period we've got that and i've seen people who join from a typical company coming into consulting services and they are struggling with this work from home they don't know they'll pack their bags at 9 o'clock they'll show up at office this is why <laughs> why are you there at 9 <laughs> right right so right. yeah well, i think there there a lot of uh, means <clears throat> earlier it was a choice right earlier it was a choice to work from home now it is more or less for a lot of a lot of people there it is not a choice to work from home it you it is you have by force you have work from home and there are a lot of jokes around that now it is proven that all that was happening was emails and <laughs> and uh, 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 so you can you you really don't need to go out anywhere your work is getting done from home you are all you need to do is just have a conference call and just send some emails you are not really doing real work real work is being done by other people so if your work is getting executed for home you your work is not really valuable so that's a joke going around so i'm not saying that that Probably is really thing probably that coming episodes we can cover that aspect also is that now when you say enterprise right enterprise enterprise working dynamics we are right. thinking of what happens inside the campus of the office right but now you have to consider house family kids neighbors all that is also become a part of an enterprise you know <laughs> yes yes so that's a huge think, difference yes probably yes. in the coming episodes we will look at that because enterprise is not what enterprise was yes absolutely absolutely 
So I think uh, we'll we'll hold that thought for the next episode or coming episodes. Uh, we'll talk about how enterprises are affected by by this and how what should be the the new way of looking at the work environment. How do how do you include your neighbors into your work environment? Yes, correct. So so so, so we'll we'll uh, keep that for one of the next episodes. Thank you all, and uh, see you next time. Thanks. Steve.